What's up guys, Lemons2KP here and welcome back to another Lemon Countdown. Now today we're going to be counting down my top 10 video games of all time. And I can honestly say that this has been the hardest LC I've done yet. Being born in 1990, I've had plenty of time to play every video game I've ever wanted without restriction. And now I'm limited to only 10 games. And just a heads up guys, PC games will not be on this list. And as always, honorable mentions will appear at the end of the video. So with that being said, let's lock and load and welcome to Lemon Countdown. Number 10, Mario Party, multi-platform. Okay, I know it's unfair to the other candidates on this list, but let's face it. With the addition of a few tweaks, every Mario Party is pretty much the same game. But back in the day when couch co-op dominated the gaming world, Mario Party was one of those games you could grab three of your friends, pick your favorite character, compete, and then potentially lose all three of those friends in one night. That's right, Mario Party was as ruthless as it was fun. It blended excitement and competition so well with its various colorful mini-games and coin-based point system. And as in life, it was always better to have the most money, but in the end, it was all about the stars. Which is why it was actually more beneficial to you to spend a little money if it meant getting you closer to a shiny trophy. Now the ruthless part was when players were actually able to rob you of both your coins and your stars. Rest in peace to those we've lost taken from the wrong people. But all jokes aside, Mario Party was and still is an amazing game to play with your friends no matter what age you are today, even if it means dusting off your old N64. Number 9, Jet Set Radio Future, Xbox. The second game in the Jet Grind Radio series, and a game I've never even heard of until I was given an Xbox for Christmas with the Jet Set Radio Future 4 GT Dual Disc. The moment I started playing this game, I wouldn't stop until my eyes turned red. Seriously. This game was so addictive and energetic that as hard as I tried to turn it off, I just couldn't. You enter into a world where you're part of a skating gang struggling to skate freely without police interference as well as the inevitable turf wars with rival skating gangs. Which is fine and all, but the cops aren't just trying to arrest you, they're trying to kill you. <laughs> Not to mention the gangs ranging from normal human beings to undead mummies. Insane. The setting is a futuristic Japan drawn with an almost comic book-like animation. You and your gang do your absolute damnedest to tag all of Japan with graffiti with no limitations whatsoever. You're able to grind up poles, wall ride billboards, and skate on top of buildings in order to claim the city as your own. The music is fantastic and is provided by the DJ on what's called Jet Set Radio, the main pop radio station within the game. And there's always some kind of music playing, and the characters never let you forget it, as they are always dancing, even in the most serious of times. I'm telling you, man, this game is a good time. Very unique and cool as all hell. I had no choice but to beat this game 100%. Number 8. Resident Evil 2. PlayStation. One does not simply talk about the survival horror genre and not mention at least one Resident Evil game. The one that stood out for me in the franchise, though, was Resident Evil 2. Following the experiences of both Claire Redfield, a worried sister looking for her brother Chris, and Leon Kennedy, a rookie cop who just moved to Raccoon City upon the start of RE2, you had the option to portray either character in the game, which was cool, but not the first time we've seen this, as the original Resident Evil game did the exact same thing. But who do you choose? The normal girl or the cop? Well, it didn't really matter as you were pretty much screwed either way. I personally enjoyed Leon's side of the story a little bit more though. As you make your way to the police station for your first day of work, you come across a lot of zombies just dying to meet you. And when you finally get there, everyone's dead. All except for your dying police chief who you learned had a party planned for you for your first day. But because he didn't bring you any balloons, you had no choice but to kill him too. You then fight your way through this game, barely surviving while trying to uncover what exactly is going on in Raccoon City. Random mysterious cutscenes try and shape the past of what's been happening, but of course that just raises more questions. In Resident Evil 2, you have to choose your fights wisely as well as conserve both your ammo and your herbs for the bigger fights. Items are limited, so be smart. Running is not too big of an issue in this game, but can be if you are hurt too much. If your life reaches danger mode, your character will severely limp until you are able to consume another herb or use a first aid spray. 
But whatever you do, do not eat the red herbs. This game was true survival horror to its core and scared the living shit out of me when I was younger. Resident Evil 2 was where my love for horror games began and I will never forget it. Number 7. Grand Theft Auto 5. Multi-platform. The moment everyone played Grand Theft Auto 3, they realized that a video game powerhouse was in the making. The Grand Theft Auto series continued to grow in popularity, raising the bar higher and higher with each game Rockstar released. Once GTA 4 hit stores, no one thought it could get any better. Then, in September of 2013, Rockstar released their perfect 10 out of 10 bombshell, Grand Theft Auto 5. Bringing back all the classic activities and abilities from previous games and introducing not one, but three intertwining storylines as the game played out. The reason why GTA has always been such a popular game is because of the realism in the sense that everything that happens in this game you could actually do in your real life, although it's strongly discouraged. How 5 sets itself apart from the rest though is because of how even more lifelike this game is. The fact that you can make money by buying and selling stock and then blow that money at the strip club with actual new dancers is amazing to me. You can play sports, exercise, drink, and all those who love to kill hookers, you're still able to do that. The multiplayer in GTA 5 is awesome as well. You're able to do co-op missions and the addition of the heist mode is just bananas. So if ever you get tired of your everyday life and decide you want to fly planes or kill cops until they send the A-Team for you, Grand Theft Auto 5 will do the trick. And if you really want to get crazy, you can drive the speed limit and obey the law. Number 6. Kingdom Hearts 2. PlayStation 2. You know, okay, I'll admit it. I was extremely skeptical about the Kingdom Hearts series. And although I'm into fantasy and Disney and stuff like that, the game seemed very childish, even if it was made by Square Enix, so I never really paid much attention to them. Then one day, my friend let me borrow Kingdom Hearts 2 and told me just give it a chance. He did warn me though that the first part dragged, but once the prologue was over, hold on tight. Okay, cool. So I go home and pop this bad boy into my PS2, and just as he warned, this prologue was the worst thing I've ever played in my entire life. You play as Roxas, who isn't even the main character in the game, mind you, and all you do is run around this town with your friends. That's it. And just when I thought things couldn't get any worse, you have to get a job. But then, it happens. The story starts to unwind a little more and you finally leave Twilight Town and go to Hollow Bastion. You are now the main character Sora and you embark on one of the greatest adventures in any video game I've ever played. On screen gameplay lights up, sparks and explodes as you fight alongside your favorite Disney characters and a few Final Fantasy ones as well. This is my story and you're not part of it. Disney had never been more real for me and Kingdom Hearts 2 is anything but childish. Kingdom Hearts has a dark origin requiring an organization of 13 deadly members seeking to regain hearts they once had. And to do so, they must kill. That's where you come in. Sora and his sidekicks Goofy and Donald Duck travel from world to world chasing after these 13 members until they are all defeated. No pun intended, but this game will always leave a mark on my heart by bringing exciting action, fantasy, and Disney all together in a video game. As well as a story that will bring a tear to your eye at least once when it's all said and done. Number 5, God of War 3, PlayStation 3. If you've never had a chance to play the God of War series, I sincerely feel bad for you. I'd never played a grittier, more action-packed game in my life. Take the rage of a man bound to the ashes of his dead family and mix that with Greek mythology and you have God of War. But we're not here for the entire series. Oh no, we're here for the final chapter in this epic trilogy. As soon as you press start, God of War 3 literally hits the ground sprinting for dear life. You play as Kratos, a former Spartan soldier who's had anything but a good life as of late. Fate has brought me here. Now Kratos is on his way up to Olympus in order to kill Zeus, and he does so by hitching a ride on the back of Mother Earth herself, Gaia. As she and her other Titan friends make their way up the mountain, you are simultaneously fighting enemies. Crazy, right? Oh, it gets better. So much is going on in just the start of the game, and just when things start to let up just a little bit, here comes Poseidon to join the party. The gods for the last time, so now you've graduated from fighting enemies on Titans to fighting gods on Titans. And when I say this game never lets up, I mean it. 
There is action at every turn and Kratos will stop at nothing to succeed in his mission. I will have my revenge! He goes on to murder literally every god we were introduced to. Poseidon, gone. Hermes, mutilated. Hera, strangled. And so on and so on. Even Hades for god's sake. Hades! Until his final fight with Zeus where he finally puts the old man down for good. My favorite fight has to be with Hercules though. The brute demigod who once defeated the Nemean lion was no match for Kratos as he proceeds to beat the living shit out of Hercules to the point where you can't even recognize his face anymore. I think I'm joking. Oh, did I mention he kills the titan Kronos too? Yep, stabs him right in the fucking head. You want action? You got it. You want blood? There's a trophy for it. You want sex? How does Aphrodite sound? Although this game was amazing all the way through, the ending definitely tied everything together for me, which I appreciate the most, despite popular disappointment. But just talking about this game does not do it justice. It stands out for its action, but does lack a little in an immersive plot. But all in all, God of War 3 set the bar so high for a video game that till this day, I've yet to play one more epic. Number 4. Gears of War. Xbox 360. Bruh. Just the name alone makes you want to lift weights and wrestle a moose. Gears of War. Now this third person shooter caught me way off guard when I first played it as it's one of the main reasons why I picked up an Xbox 360. It revolutionized third person games and changed how I viewed shooters forever. The campaign was awesome, the multiplayer was even better, but it's the energy of the characters that always made me laugh. Believe me when I say these guys are the buffest, most testosterone ridden dudes I've ever seen in a video game and man do they love the scream and curse. Even when they reload their gun. Damn. Damn it. Damn. Damn. Ain't shit and die. It turns everything badass man. Not to mention the Lancer. The Coalition issued assault rifle with a chainsaw attached to it. That's right, as if bullets weren't bad enough, if you so choose to, you could chop a motherfucker in half. Oh shit, man, where you been? Now why is it in my top? Well, Gears of War multiplayer is still my favorite online experience of all time. And that goes for Gears 1, 3, and of course 4. There's such a unique way to play Gears of War that I don't even think the creators were aware of while making this game. Your shotgun essentially becomes your best friend and you defend yourself with the technique known as the wall bounce. Now for those who don't know what that means, you're quickly going on and off, or bouncing off walls in order to avoid getting shot, all while trying to shoot your opponent. And if you manage to down your opponent without reducing them to mush, you are then able to execute them. A curb stomp being one of the options. Yes. Now if you love gore, guns, and satisfying headshots, then Gears of War is definitely the game for you. The long struggle against overwhelming odds. Please, please, please don't. Please. Number 3. Last of Us. PlayStation 3. Although I still don't know exactly what genre to classify this game as, Last of Us takes both survival horror and action adventure and kicks them square in the nads as Naughty Dog releases yet another masterpiece. Straight out of the gate, you are thrown into a seemingly normal world and then BOOM! The main character Joel loses what little life he had and tries to survive a modern day hellish nightmare. But what makes this gem stand out is how immersive and emotional the story is. When Joel agrees to smuggle a teenage girl named Ellie for a rebel group, they end up forming a father-daughter-like relationship and their interactions reflect contemporary behavior in our everyday lives. But when Joel learns that this job could kill this girl, he does everything he can to protect her and possibly regain a part of him that he had lost once before. Now let's talk about the gameplay. You make every shot count. Natural ambiance throughout Last of Us creates a terrifyingly realistic setting as horror sequences take place. <gasps> and defending yourself is about the same. And by that I mean very realistic and limited. Aside from the bow and a few other weapons you find along the way, you're pretty much finding scraps in the environment to create your own tools for survival. And if you're like me who can't seem to walk three feet without being spotted in stealth games, you're gonna wanna load up on bricks. You're gonna need them. But all in all, Last of Us was an extraordinary experience that taps into your inner survivor to make do in a world that's not much different than our own. War has changed.
one. Number two, Metal Gear Solid 4, Guns of the Patriots, PlayStation 3. Les enfants terribles. Three words that send chills down my spine every single time I hear them. Words, of course, referring to the three main characters of Metal Gear Solid. Solidus, Liquid, and of course, the legend himself, Solid Snake. Metal Gear Solid as a franchise has to be the greatest thing to happen in video game history, hands down. But Kojima Productions really outdid themselves when it came to Metal Gear Solid 4. Activate it. With three main games coming before Guns of the Patriots, all incredible I might add, it was only right that this one made references dating back to the previous installments. Characters, concepts, and even locations are brought back to life as Metal Gear Solid 4 relentlessly breaks you down emotionally. We never stood a chance. And just when you thought it couldn't get any better, you fight a Metal Gear Ray with a Metal Gear Rex. What? You're telling me I can actually pilot one of those things instead of fighting one with shaft grenades and a pack of smokes? Kojima, you son of a bitch. Where our fates were born, and where yours ends, Snake. If you've played this game, you know that it's about 40% gameplay and 60% cutscenes. Which in my opinion is okay, because Metal Gear Solid has always been a very story-driven franchise. The best, I'd say. But of course can only be truly appreciated if you've played the previous games. How can you still be alive? It's been a long time. But I've never felt more for characters in a game than I have in Metal Gear Solid 4, as Solid Snake and his team fight a seemingly endless war. And again, it's a world that's not too far off from what's going on in ours today if you get right down to it. Storytelling, character development, and execution are the three main elements that make Metal Gear Solid 4 my number two pick for best video games of all time. We're running out of time. You've got to keep moving. Please. Number one. Gunstar Heroes. Sega Genesis. Yep, you heard me right. A Sega Genesis game is my favorite video game of all time. But hear me out. What exactly makes a game good, hmm? Story? Action? Visuals? What about sounds? If you answered yes to those, then you know why Gunstar Heroes is on this list. Keep in mind it was maybe 95 when I first played this game, and I can tell you it was way ahead of its time. Your control of your character was so smooth, the weapon system was unique, and the awesome part? It was a very simple concept. Let's start with the characters. No one had a name, just colors. That went for your friends as well as your enemies. You played as either red or as brother blue depending on which controller you were. And to take it a step further, you were able to pick your type of weapon as well as how you shot it. Free shot allowed you to move freely while shooting your weapon but lowered your overall accuracy. While fixed shot allowed you to aim more precisely with your weapon but strip you of your movement when firing. Both had their equal advantages, but I always picked free. The most notable part of Gunstar Heroes for me, though, was its sound effects. I can't stress enough how badass the noises were in this game. And if you're someone like me, sound effects can make or break a game in a heartbeat. And I don't care if the game you're playing involves putting mustard on a hot dog. If those sound effects are on point, I'm buying the sequel. Explosions, robotic charges, and player exclamations make you want to play Gunstar Heroes more and more. That mixed with the game soundtrack made for the greatest video game experience and memory I've ever had. Whether it was Green with his 7 Force, or Black with his Deadly Dice game, it was never a dull moment in Gunstar Heroes. But never fear, you can still get this amazing game on Steam, the Xbox Marketplace, and the PlayStation Network. I strongly encourage you to download it if you will not be disappointed. Well there you have it. Even after this top 10 list, there are still so many other games I wanted to mention. And as the years go on, technology grows and ideas become less original. But I'm always excited to see what the next big game will be and I'm always curious about the ones I may have missed. So feel free to drop your top picks in the comments below. But as for right now, you guys see the banner so you know what to do. Like, subscribe, join the nation. My name is Lemons2KP, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next countdown. Later.